Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. I've uh, been waiting to do this video because I was hoping for some results back, but it's, there's a long wait time, so I'm just going to do the video. Genetic testing. It is just transforming the reptile world right before our eyes. I want to go over a few things. Um, so Morph Market has teamed with Rare Genetics Inc., I believe they're called. Um, and I've actually talked to the Rare Genetics Inc. guy many times over the last several years, just curious about his work. Um, you know, a couple years ago we sent him in some shed skin from some tree monitors because he was working on uh, sex tests for varanids. Well, he got a big boost, obviously, when Morph Market paired up with him. Morph Market's been making huge strides recently. They're trying to, like, corner the market on all sorts of things, which is great. They're a very, very, very professional company. Um, but anyways, they now offer genetic testing. You can get uh, sex tests for colubrids, sex tests for ball pythons, and there's one other, maybe green tree pythons or something. I can't remember what the other one is. Um, you can also get uh, genetic testing for various morphs in ball pythons, which is just absolutely exciting. And let me explain why. Uh, and they're not, they're certainly, ju they're just getting started, right? They've developed a test for albino and lavender, ultramel, clown, pied, yellow belly complex, all the yellow belly complex genes. Um, I might be missing one or two. They're in development for Desert Ghost um, and Orange Dream and several others. So, uh, the reason this is so exciting is kind of twofold. One, it's easy to know what to hold back now, right? You know, when you do these more advanced breedings with recessive traits that used to be, oh, 66% possible het, 50% possible het, etc. Now, you just send in the shed skins and for a, a very reasonable price, you can get a guarantee. Oh, this, it, this baby, guaranteed het clown. This baby, guaranteed not het clown, right? So, I have before you uh, two of my holdback females that uh, are putting on good size. Not ready to breed yet, though. That's why they're at our house. Um, this girl is Astrid. She is a pastel het clown, het lavender. Guaranteed. 100%. Uh, father was a clown. Mother is a lavender albino. So, uh, and then here we have a yellow belly clown. I don't think she has anything else in her. <clears throat> Visual clown, obviously. So, previous to genetic testing, the types of pairings I might do, I might take this girl and get a male that is also double het for clown and lavender, going for those, those traditional 1 in 16 odds for a double recessive project, right? But, all those babies... I would not know what they were except for when visual stuff popped out, right? Uh, anything that is not visual clown and anything that is not visual lavender, you would not have any way to know what it was. Now, you just get the clutch tested, you know exactly which babies are carrying those genes. Um, now, it's even more exciting than that. Because of that ability, I could go out and get, uh, uh, say there's another recessive trait that I want in my grail project, the, the clown lavender project. Maybe I want, um, oh, I'm trying to think what, what might go really nice that's recessive with lavender and clown, uh, pied. What if I want pied in there, okay? I might go get a visual pied male combo, right, and breed him to this female. She's not het pied. And that pied male is not het clown and is not het lavender. But that's okay. Because now every single baby is going to be het pied because of the dad. And I can test them to see which ones are het clown and het lavender. 
and you have a one in four chance. It's really not that stretched of odds, right? It's just that before you would have had to keep the entire clutch and just hope that the breedings worked out in the future. Now you can just be like, oh, this female is a triple het pied clown lavender and it's guaranteed. And I didn't have to go out and buy a ridiculously expensive male that is, you know, already a pied lavender het clown or whatever with, you know, other jeans on top of it that would have just been thousands and thousands of dollars. I can just put a nice pied male to her with good other, you know, incomplete dominant jeans on top for sure and still further my project with confidence because we can test, right? So does that make sense? So look at this girl, this yellow belly clown. Um, typically, I would either, if I'm going for, you know, double recessives, I'd take a, a desert ghost combo or a, a whatever, right? Uh, an ultramel combo and I would breed it and we would get um, double hats. But I no longer have to do that. We just produced an Ultramel Pied. Actually, that doesn't matter because those are both visual. Before we produced our visual Ultramel Pied, and we were working with just double het Ultramel Pieds, I could have bred one of those males. Uh, you know, we had we did a breeding loan with Nagaden, and he has a, a orange dream yellow belly double het Ultramel Pied. That was our stud male, right, for that project. We could now breed that male to this female and everything's guaranteed, you know, uh, that clown because she's a visual clown. We could even test though for yellow belly because sometimes it's hard to see yellow belly in some combos. We could also test for Ultramel and Pied. And we would have a very good shot at producing guaranteed het clown Ultramel Pieds that could also be yellow belly or orange dream from the male or, or whatever, right? Does, does that make sense how it broadens the types of projects that I as a small time breeder am willing to do? You know, these guys who have 40 snakes dedicated to one project because they've just kept everything over the years, they don't necessarily have to be as careful. They can just keep everything and breed them and they're going to produce the babies they want from sheer numbers. I can't do that. Keeping 40 snakes for one project, that's like half of my snakes, <laughs> right? I just, unless I only want to have one project, which some people do that, completely fine. That's a, that's a viable way to go. I like the variety. I like having several projects going at once. I really enjoy that. But I can only keep two or three animals per project, right? This genetic testing just makes all of my dreams more possible on a reasonable timeline where I don't have to keep dozens and dozens of babies. I can just keep the ones that test positive. And for customers, I don't have to sell a snake to somebody saying it's 66% het. I hope it works out for you. You know, I can now test the babies. And it's still, as a business person, in my best interest because if I get even, say I produce one female that's, that I'm willing to sell that's guaranteed triple het for whatever, that animal is so valuable now monetarily, it paid for all the tests and some. And so it's just worth it for everyone. It's worth it for Morph Market, it's worth it for Rare Genetics Inc. They're getting huge business out of this. It's worth it for the customer because they can more specifically target the animals they really want to buy without taking risks. And it's worth it for the breeders because you can do the same thing. You can hold back the ones that aren't any risk to you and you can give a, a perfectly accurate representation of all your animals to your customers. It, it, I, I just cannot stress how much I think this will change things. People will do the exact projects they want without fear of producing possible heads. And so they'll take risks that aren't really that risky anymore. Uh, and, and the types of combos they're gonna make that they just wouldn't have done before because the odds of getting what you wanted and then knowing which babies to keep were just too scary before all this, right? So here in another year, they're probably gonna have, you know, 15 more tests. They're gonna eventually, I would guess every single recessive trait and most of the incomplete dominant ones that are kind of difficult to see in some combos, there will be a test for it. So it's just, it's so, 
it's not life changing, you know, <laughs> but for, for our business, it, it changes the life of our business for sure. And the excitement level of taking some of these risks out of the process so that we can know what's going to happen. Uh, anyways, so I hope that the, the these animals, um, th that made sense, the kind of the combos I walked you through, just so you can see from my perspective why I'm so excited, right? If nothing else, you got to see some beautiful animals. Um, this girl here in particular, she's getting close to breeding size, um, so she won't be at my house much longer. She'll go over to the reptile barn. And I have to decide what to breed to her. And now I have a lot more options than I thought. My plan was to buy a blackhead, double het, lavender clown male. And I may still do that, but I don't have to, right? What if we decide we want to put tristripe into it or pied into it or whatever? So anyways, I'm very excited. Um, we're gonna have to, me and Liz and my brother Caleb, we're gonna have to sit down and re-go over our next kind of year's worth of plans of pairings because what we had might change now, right? Um, here, let me give you one random example real quick before I, sorry, I know this video is getting really long. We have several double het guaranteed and proven ultramelpied, het ultramelpied females. And we produced the double visual male. He's not going to be ready to breed this season. But uh, we were just going to redo last year's pairings with that awesome orange dream yellow belly double het ultramel pied male. But for one of those females, I've actually started putting our sunset to them. Because sunset pieds are to die for. Sunset Ultramels, in my opinion, are one of the most glorious snakes I have ever laid eyes on. And put them all together, which now we can do with quite a lot of confidence, because everything will be at sunset, and one in four odds of also getting the guaranteed double head Ultramel Pied. And we'll just test everything, and we'll keep the ones that got what we wanted, right? Does that make sense? And we will have triple het Sunset Ultramel Pieds, which... I'm geeking out about, <laughs> right? So that's the kind of thing that this has opened us up to, uh, that possibility, right? Anyways, I will let you go. Um, uh, maybe you guys aren't as geeked for this as I am. Oh, oh no, don't go on the chair. But uh, uh, I do think that a lot of breeders around the country and around the world are very, very excited about this. Thank you guys for sticking with me. And for watching, until next time, we're the Reptile Barn.